It's amazing to think that you can play four different decades worth of video games on one single Fire TV device. But it's true, and this is the real deal. I'm about to show you everything it takes to load RetroWatch on your Fire TV device so you can start playing your favorite games your way. And be sure to stay to the end of the video for an important bonus tip that you won't want to miss. You'll absolutely want to use high capacity USB storage in order to maximize the number of games you can load. That's where this OTG or on the go cable adapter comes in. I've got this link for you in the video description. You see, most Fire TV stick devices only have one single micro USB port and it's labeled power. So you have to put power to the device in order for it to work, which means you won't be able to connect storage to it under this circumstance. And that's where this handy OTG cable comes in. You simply plug in your mass storage device into the female USB end of the cable. Next up, plug in the micro USB male lead from the adapter into the female micro USB port on the Fire TV stick or Fire TV device. Finally, plug in the device's included micro USB wall power into the female adapter on the OTG cable. And about that mass storage device, it needs to be formatted in FAT32 format. If you're going to use mass storage larger than 32 gigabytes, you'll need to use an app like GUI format. I've got it linked for you in the description. Just click on the big image right in the center of the page and it will download the software for you. Go ahead and insert your USB mass storage device into your PC. Then navigate to your downloads folder and double click on the GUI format software. Then at the UAC prompt that appears, select yes to start the program. Before you do anything with the software, you really want to go look in the top left corner and make sure that you are using the correct drive letter for the USB drive that you have plugged into your computer. Once you're certain, navigate down to the bottom of the window and click on start to begin the process. Then at the confirmation window that appears, navigate to OK and click on it. And you may very well see a message that says that it can't format the drive under this condition. This is why I wanted to show this to you so it didn't trip you up. Here's how to fix it. From this PC in Windows File Explorer, locate the drive letter that represents your USB drive. You'll need to format the drive in XFAT format. Verify the drive letter, the type of formatting that you're using, and then come down to start and click on it. Then at the confirmation window that appears, click on OK. This formats your drive. Once the format's complete, click OK to go back to the format main menu. Then just close out that window by clicking the red X in the top right corner. Now relaunch the GUI format software. Once again, make sure you have the right drive selected in the top left corner before proceeding. Just like before, click the start button and click the OK button at the confirmation pop-up. Now your high capacity drive should be formatted in FAT32 format with no issues. Once the format process is complete, come down to the bottom right corner and click on close to close out the GUI format software. Back in Windows File Explorer, I have a folder that's called Demo. This has two sets of folders inside of it. The first one is called BIOS, and that's got the system BIOS files. The other one's called Test ROMs, it's got Test ROMs. I'm gonna set this window up on the left side, in the newly formatted FAT32 USB drive window on the right side. You can drag and drop system BIOS files and ROMs anywhere on that drive that you want. In this case, I'm just gonna drop these two folders right on the root of the drive. Now you can close out everything in Windows, set up everything in the OTG adapter, and power up your Fire TV device. If you don't yet have a wireless controller for your Fire TV stick for gaming, you definitely want one. I have one link for you in the description. Let's go ahead and set one up. Go into settings on the main navigation ribbon on your Fire TV device. Then use the remote control to navigate to controllers and Bluetooth devices. Then select it with the enter button on the remote. Use the D-pad to scroll down to game controllers and select it with the enter button. Now select add new game controller with the enter button. Press the Bluetooth pairing button on your wireless controller to synchronize it to your Fire TV device. In this case, I'm using an Xbox wireless controller. Once the name of your controller appears, select it with the enter button on the remote control and the devices will be paired. Then press the home button on your Amazon Fire TV based remote to go back to the main menu. RetroArch is now natively hosted on the Amazon App Store. To grab it, go to the Apps tab, use the D-pad to scroll down to App Store and select it with the enter button. From the navigation ribbon in the App Store, use the D-pad to move over to search and select it with the enter button. From here, you'll need to start typing in the word RetroArch on the virtual keyboard. You'll see RetroArch pop up near the top of the search suggestions. 
use the D-pad to move the highlight down to RetroArch and select it with the Enter button on the remote. You'll see a large icon for RetroArch appear. Select it with the Enter button on the remote. Now you'll be on the main app listing page for RetroArch. To grab the software, navigate to Download and select it with the Enter button on the remote. Once RetroArch is finished downloading and installing, you'll see that the Download button will turn into an Open button. Select Open with the Enter button on your remote to continue. Before RetroArch starts for the first time, you'll be notified that you need to grant permission to the application to access external storage, meaning your BIOS and ROMs files. Select OK with the Enter button to continue. Then, at the confirmation prompt, select Allow with the Enter button on the remote. The first time you run RetroArch, it has to take care of some basic setup tasks. Just give it a moment and it will complete these tasks automatically for you. Press any button on your Fire TV remote to pair it to RetroArch. First order of business, navigate to Online Updater and select it with the Enter button. You'll need to manually download the cores for any of the game systems that you want to play. They are not all included on the initial download. Select Core Downloader with the Enter button to get started. In this case, I'm going to download cores for the following systems. Atari 2600, Atari Lynx, Nintendo Game Boy Advance, Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and the Sega Genesis System. Once you have your desired cores downloaded, press the back button on the remote control. Let's run some online updates so that RetroWatch will work at its peak performance level. Use the remote to scroll down through the list of choices and press enter on the following. Update core info files, update assets, update controller profiles, update databases, update overlays, and update GLSL shaders. Once you have all of these up to date, press the back button on the remote control to go back to the RetroArch main menu. Let's check a couple of key settings on your controller. Use the D-pad on the remote control to scroll to the left navigation, then down to Settings. Select Settings with the Enter button, then scroll down to Input, and select Input with Enter. Use the D-pad on the remote control to scroll down through the list of choices until you see Hotkeys, then select Hotkeys with the Enter button. Scroll down through the list of choices to Menu, Toggle, Controller, Combo and select it with the Enter button. This is necessary to toggle the main RetroArch menu while you're playing a game. This also lets you exit a game to go back to the RetroArch main menu without having to go to the Fire TV OS main menu. Choose the hotkey combo that works for you with your controller, then go back one level in the RetroArch menu using the remote control. Then go back one more level using the back button on the remote. From here, use the D-pad on the remote control to navigate down to port 1 controls and select it with the enter button. Take a moment to go through the button, D-pad, and analog stick controls shown here. You just want to make sure that they all match your expectations. Once you're satisfied with the button layout, press the back button once, then twice on the remote control to go back two levels. From here, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the listings to the word directory and select it with the enter button on the remote. RetroArch doesn't yet know where to look for your BIOS and ROM files, but it's about to. The first listing in the menus is for system BIOS files. Select it with the enter button on the remote so that we can point it to the right location. First, use the D-pad to scroll the highlight down to Storage and select Storage with the Enter button. You're going to see an alphanumeric character string of 8 characters with a dash in the middle. That represents your USB mass storage device. Scroll down to it and select it with the Enter button. Now you can navigate to wherever you put your system BIOS files on the mass storage USB drive. And select that folder with the Enter button on the remote. Next, use the D-pad to scroll down to Use This Directory and select it with the Enter button. This next step is optional, but highly recommended. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to the listing for downloads. Then select downloads with the enter button on the remote. Then follow the same process as before by selecting storage from the list of choices with the enter button on the remote. Then scroll down to the eight character alphanumeric listing and select it with the enter button. This time, locate your game ROMs folder, in this case, the folder called test ROMs. Then select it with the enter button on the remote. Finally, use the D-pad to scroll down to Use This Directory and select it with the Enter button on the remote. This step helps RetroArch always know where your game ROM files are even if you haven't imported them yet. Press the Back button on the remote to go back to the RetroArch main menu. In the side navigation bar, use the D-pad to scroll down to Import Content and select it with the Enter button. From the list of choices, select Scan Directory with the Enter button. Just like before, scroll down to Storage and select it with Enter. Scroll down to the 8 character alphanumeric listing with the dash in the middle and select it with Enter. Locate the folder that has your ROMs, in this case, test ROMs. 
Then select that folder with the Enter button. Use the D-pad to scroll down to scan this directory and select it with the Enter button. This will scan every folder and subfolder inside this area for any ROM files that you have that also have a core already downloaded for them. Press the back button on the remote control several times until you get back to the RetroArch main menu. As you scroll down through the left navigation, you'll now find that any of the ROMs that you scanned in the previous step are all now represented as playlist in the left navigation. It's very convenient. Also, when you scroll over to the right for any of the listed games, you'll now get box art downloaded for them too. Nice! All right, let's launch a game and just make sure that both the ROMs and the system BIOS files are working correctly. In this case, I'm gonna launch Zybots for the Atari Lynx because it requires a BIOS file in order for the Lynx emulator to work correctly. Navigate to any game of your choice and select it with the Enter button on the remote. Then select Run with Enter, the file inside the zipped archive if you copied over your ROMs in zip format, and then select Run again with Enter. It's all working great and that's cool in the gang. But what about that bonus tip I promised you at the beginning of the video? Well, here it is. I was able to run all four decades of the game system content you saw at the beginning of this video on the base model Fire TV Stick Lite. Check the link in the description to grab one of these from Amazon at an unbelievable price. There's one more thing you should really do with your Fire TV device, and if you miss out on this, it'd be a real shame. Check out this video to learn how to jailbreak your Fire TV base device. And great news, you don't even need a PC to do it anymore.